A habitat is a natural environment that provides plants or animals the food, water, and shelter that they need to live. Our planet has a wide variety of habitats that support many different forms of life. Let's go exploring in a garden. It's a kind of habitat you might find at school, in a park, at your house, or in a meadow. Gardens usually have lots of different types of plants. They can take up a lot of space or just be in a few containers. Some gardens grow food like carrots and peas. Some gardens grow trees and flowers. One thing all gardens have in common is they make a good habitat for plants and animals. It is really interesting to see how the plants and animals depend on each other. Let's see how plants and animals in gardens find food, water, shelter, and air. Plants depend on nutritious soil to grow in. Nutrients are added to soil in a process called decomposition. This is how it works. When plants and animals die, they begin to rot and are eaten by tiny critters. After they eat, all living creatures poop and they leave miniature food scraps which continue rotting and breaking down even further. Finally, they become super small, microscopic pieces that are food for the tiniest forms of life, like bacteria and fungi. As months go by in a garden, things are always growing and decomposing. In addition to needing nutritious soil, plants need food. Have you heard of photosynthesis? It's how plants make food for themselves using sunshine, water from the soil, and carbon dioxide from the air. Isn't it amazing to know that plants make their own food through photosynthesis? You can also say that plants make food for animals too, because animals that are herbivores eat plants. Or if they are carnivores, they eat animals that eat plants. It's easy to see how important plants are to animals. All living things need water. When it rains or someone waters a garden, plants and animals get the water they need to survive. Some insects drink dew that collects on leaves and other surfaces in the garden. Puddles and bird baths give many critters a place to get a drink. All living things also need clean air. Plants breathe in carbon dioxide in the air. We are lucky that plants breathe out oxygen that humans need to breathe. When you are in the garden, take a deep breath and enjoy the fresh air. Fun fact, some plants like lichen will only grow where the air is clean. Gardens are full of flowers and flowers are full of sweet juice called nectar. Nectar provides food for many garden animals like butterflies and hummingbirds. When an animal gets nectar from a flower, it also helps the flower. Bees, hummingbirds, and butterflies get pollen on their bodies and take it with them as they go to feed from another flower. The pollen falls off their bodies and onto another flower, which helps the flower to make seeds. This is called pollination. Next time you see a flower, get close and smell it. You might get some pollen on your finger or nose. Touch the pollen. Notice that it's a little bit sticky. Now you can see how it sticks to pollinators too. You've seen honeybees flying from flower to flower to collect nectar to take back to their hives. They can feed nectar to other bees or store it away where it will turn into honey, so they'll have something to eat during the winter when fewer flowers are blooming. I bet you like honey too. Honeybees do a waggle dance when they return to their hive to tell other bees where to find the flowers with the most nectar. These bees build hives with wax produced by their bodies. Hives provide bees with a sheltered place to store food, raise new bees, 
and protect them from the sun and the rain. There are many kinds of bees that don't build hives. Native bees find shelter in a hollow stick or in a hole in the ground. They eat nectar too and are just as important as honeybees since they also pollinate lots of plants. Birds find lots of things to eat in gardens, like insects, fruit, berries, and even flowers. Some birds eat the seeds that flowers make when they are finished blooming. Gardens provide materials birds use to make their nests, a sheltered place to raise their babies. Have you seen birds collecting grass or sticks for their nests? Hummingbirds use sticky spider webs to hold their nests together and they use lichen they find growing on trees or rocks to camouflage their nests. Look for this beautiful garden spider next time you are in the garden. Their webs catch many kinds of flying insects like bees, wasps, and flies. Sometimes garden spiders themselves become someone's lunch. Who might eat a spider? Ladybugs are good neighbors to have in a garden since they love to eat little insects called aphids. Aphids suck the sap out of plants and can cause them to wilt. Did you know that ladybugs can eat 60 aphids in a day? Like many other insects, when ladybugs are babies, they don't look like their parents. They are in a form called larva. Just like the very hungry caterpillar, they look a lot like worms and are super hungry. Ladybug larvae can eat 600 aphids in just one day. That's a big help to garden plants, but not so great for the aphid population. Many people poison aphids and other insects that harm plants. We call these poisons pesticides. The problem with pesticides is that they also kill insects like ladybugs before they can do their work eating the harmful insects. Instead of using pesticides, wash aphids away by spraying them with a hose or just let ladybugs eat them for lunch. Next time you are in a garden, be a detective and see if you can find places where animals can find food, water, air, and shelter. <laughs>